Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for choosing to hang out with me once again. Do you remember that movie, Jennifer's Body? It came out in 2009 and starred Megan Fox. The plot essentially was that Megan portrayed a high schooler who becomes demonically possessed when a rock band botches an attempt to sacrifice her to Satan. It gained a following and a new appreciation among viewers for a feminist spin on horror tropes. But what many have noticed is it bears surprising similarities to the real-life murder of Elise Poller. Elise was only 15 years old when her life was tragically snatched away. The case is not only crazy, but maybe graphic for some. So let's talk. Sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Elise Marie Poller was born on April 24, 1980 in Templeton, California. By the time she was a teenager, her family had moved to Arroyo Grande. She was described as a great child by her parents, despite typical teenage rebellion. She was very independent and sociable, always reaching out and wanting to know everyone at school. Elise participated in sports, was active in her church choir, and the local theater as she had aspirations to become an actress. She did dabble in an experimentation with alcohol and marijuana, which did get out of hand. During high school, she was suspended for five days due to her underage drinking. Elisa's parents became concerned about her substance abuse and sent her to Murray Posts, a community recovery center. During her time at the center, she met a young man named Jacob Delashmet, who changed her life, just not for the better. She had actually gone to school with Jacob prior to him being kicked out. Through Jacob, she went on to meet his friend, Joseph Fiorella, who also attended her school prior to being expelled, and Royce Casey, who was just a friend of the boys. The boys were known for having troubled backgrounds. Jacob in particular came from a religious family and was known for being a talented artist, but unfortunately had an appetite for amphetamines. Royce and Joseph were difficult students, known drug users, and social outcast. Together, they formed a band they called Hatred, which was heavily inspired by another band, Slayer. All three boys appeared to have a growing interest in devil worshiping and the occult. Joseph, who was the youngest of the group, seemed to be the most knowledgeable on the subject. He had a growing library which contained pamphlets written by some of the prominent Satanists of the time. Allegedly, it was through songs by Slayer and their extracurricular reading that gave them a peculiar idea. Hatred was going nowhere. They were known locally but couldn't seem to push past that barrier. During one of their practices, Joseph pitched an idea to his pals. He suggested they offer Satan a virgin sacrifice to help provide them a record deal. With the power of Satan, they could play harder, faster, and give a crazier experience that could really put hatred on the map. Everyone having the same goal in mind decided it may just be crazy enough to work. They also knew the perfect candidate to offer as a sacrifice, Elise Poller. The boys picked Elise because of her blonde hair, blue eyes, and the assumption she was a virgin. They believed killing her was the ultimate sin against God and was a guaranteed one-way ticket to hell. The plan was concocted for months, but they finally decided to make a move. On July 22, 1995, Elise received a call from Jacob inviting her to come hang out with him and his friends. They wanted to go to a eucalyptus grove near her home to smoke marijuana. Since she was well acquainted with the group, she agreed to go. Later that night, she snuck out of her home unaware of what was to transpire. 
They lured her out to the grove where initially it was lighthearted conversations and partaking of substances. But once she let her guard down, Jacob struck first. He removed his belt and slung it around her neck from behind and pulled it tightly. Royce then grabbed her hands and restrained her despite her struggles. She began to slowly pass out when Joseph pulled out a hunting knife. Joseph stabbed her over and over in the neck before passing the knife to Jacob and Royce, who each took a turn stabbing her. Elise was on the ground begging for her mother to help her and praying to God to make her suffering end while the boys kicked her in the back of the neck. Ultimately, her body gave in. Before they left the grove, the boys sexually assaulted her body. They left her there where she would stay for the next eight months. Reportedly, some of the boys would return occasionally to continue to assault the body. Elise's family filed a missing persons report. Initially, they felt she had run away from home and knew it would only be a matter of time before she returned. While, on the other hand, the boys openly told two other friends about the events that happened. They bragged about not only killing her, but performing necrophilic acts as well. But since they were always social outcasts, no one really listened or believed a word they had to say. When the weeks turned to months, her family grew more worried. They continued their search for Elise, unaware that their daughter was lying in the grove a quarter of a mile from their home. The case would take a drastic turn when Royce became estranged from the boys. Royce found God becoming a full-on Christian and changing not only his views, but his heart as well. Royce had become scared. He was scared the urge to kill would surface again. He was also worried that he could be the next target for his ex-friends. Another troubling aspect was Joseph and Jacob stating Elise wouldn't be the only one and they planned on sacrificing more girls in the name of Satan. So rather than risk more lives, Royce went to the police, confessing everything and leading them to Elise's body. The autopsy report revealed she sustained 12 stab wounds, none of which were fatal, meaning Elise had slowly bled to death. Royce was very transparent about the crime, revealing their only motive was to provide a sacrifice to Satan so he would reward them. For police, the story was crazy and couldn't seem to get any more so, until it did. This wasn't their first attempt at killing Elise. Royce explained that prior to him joining the group, Jacob, Joseph, and a third boy had plotted to kill her on a separate occasion. She was invited on a walk when they led her to a ravine. The third boy pretended to slip down the ravine and coaxed Elise to join him. Unsuspecting, she did. Joseph pulled out a knife and threw it to the boy, while Jacob, from the side, encouraged him to kill her but the boy froze and was unable to go through with it. Elise must have thought the group was joking around as she never reported it and continued to hang out with them. Royce admitted he had a hard time dealing with his part in the murder. He began keeping a journal in which he describes fighting a dark side. He became more reclusive and just wrote in this journal as a coping mechanism. On March 14, 1996, Jacob and Joseph were also arrested and brought in. They both denied practicing Satanism, but admitted that they all played a part in her death. The boys at the time of the murder ranged from 15 to 17 years old. All three of them testified it had been Slager's music that inspired them to attempt a sacrificing ritual. Joseph, Jacob, and Royce received the charge of murder for the death of Elise. All three were tried separately in San Luis Obispo Superior Court in 1997, and all pled no contest, receiving the sentence of 25 years to life in prison. 
Royce is currently incarcerated at R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego, California. He was denied parole in 2016 and goes up before the board this year. Joseph is incarcerated at High Desert State Prison in Susanville and is up for parole. Jacob is incarcerated at the Correctional Training Facility in Soledad with no information available about his parole situation. After all these years in jail, they've come out with statements regarding their motives. Jacob in particular has cast doubt on the satanic angle, stating, quote, The music is destructive, but not why Elise was murdered. She was murdered because Joseph was obsessed with her and obsessed with killing her, end quote. The Pollard family filed a lawsuit against Slayer. They cited their songs Postmortem and Dead Skin Mask provided the killers with instructions on how to commit such heinous acts. In the 80s, Satanic Panic was in full swing. Metal music was new and it was scary for parents at the time. They didn't understand any of it and decided it was the work of the devil, and Satan was the scapegoat for everything. This was seen in several cases such as parents trying to sue the band Judas Priest and Ozzy Osbourne for hiding subliminal messages which they claimed encouraged their children to take their own lives. But in all of these cases, including the Pollard case, the lawsuits were dropped. The judge reviewed the lyrics and felt that even though the lyrics were repulsive and profane, they did not direct listeners to commit these acts. They were more descriptive rather than instructive as the family previously stated. The case infringed on the band's rights to freedom of speech, which the judge stated, quote, There's not a legal position that could be taken that would make Slayer responsible for the girl's death. Where do you draw the line? You might as well start looking through the library at every book on the shelf, end quote. They attempted to rework their case by angling it to the record company selling profane music to children, but this too was dropped. Slayer responded to the claim, feeling it was wrong for them to try and make them the scapegoat, with the drummer even mentioning the boys didn't follow the sacrifice ritual in their song. The mental anguish of Elisa's death plagued her family. In 2014, her father was involved in a road rage incident, which he claimed was spurred by his PTSD. He pulled a driver out of their vehicle who cut him off. For this, he received a battery charge. David was placed on probation in order to take anger management classes. The family also suffered financial hardship due to David being unable to work after Elisa's death. Restitution was ordered in the sentencing of the boys, but to this day, no restitution has been paid to the family of Elise Poller. Whether demonic lyrics or a boy's dark obsession hardly matters to the people who loved Elise. Her life was cut in the cruelest way when it was only beginning. I found this case because I was thinking about cases linked to horror films. For some reason, I was really interested in this subject this week, and back in the day, I enjoyed this movie. Cheesy or not, I'm a horror film connoisseur, and feel they all kind of have a special place. So I wanted to share this case with you all in case maybe you enjoyed the movie too. But as always, I'm interested in hearing what your thoughts are. So leave your comments below and we can chat about it. And if you found this video to be interesting, then please consider giving it a thumbs up to let YouTube know you want more. And lastly, if you're not subscribed yet, you should because we would love to have you under the ash tree. So I'm trying really hard to get back on my regular upload schedule, but my full-time job is kicking my butt. <laughs> but. As always, I thank you for being patient and continuing to show me love and support. This community continues to amaze me. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, friends.